In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as we just tapped a 19-month high of $38,800. Let's freaking go. And quoting Max Kaiser, millions are fleeing the repressive regimes of the United States, Canada, the EU, etc., and migrating to El Salvador, the new land of the free preach. Also, Bitcoin ETFs user experience will drive the adoption, according to the eToro CEO. We'll also be discussing Bloomberg analysts says the SEC is lining up to potentially approve all the spot Bitcoin ETF apps in January, and there's currently 13 of them. Also, in today's show, breaking news, Grayscale is preparing for the Bitcoin ETF launch with the hiring of Invesco ETF executive as the managing director to head the distribution and strategic partnerships. We're all set. Let's freaking go. Also breaking news, the president of Colombia is now officially a Bitcoin hodler. That's right. Samson Mao sent him 100,000 sats and they're already discussing Bitcoin adoption for the beautiful uh, country of Colombia, which has a population of roughly 50 million people. Also in today's show, on-chain analyst Willie Wu says on-chain Bitcoin metric is flashing the same bullish pattern as last year's market bottom, which can send the price action to $524,000 per BTC. Also in today's show, I'm going to be sharing a catalyst which can trigger a Bitcoin explosion to multiple six figures at neck-breaking pace, according to the Strike CEO, Jack Maulers. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. And welcome everyone just joining us. Massive congratulations to all the Bitcoin hodlers out there because we just hit 19 month highs. It's been a long time coming and we are so close to recapturing $40,000. Let's freaking go. Quick reminder, if you're new to the channel, be sure to smash the subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And be sure to smash the like button as it helps out tremendously with a YouTube algorithm. And we already have the Christmas theme ready as we have entered December. And we're going to have some more overlays uh, throughout the month as well for the different scenes. So let me know if you are ready for Christmas. Where do you feel the Bitcoin price action is likely to take us? And welcome, everyone. This is podcast episode number 1478. I'm your host, JV. Goodbye, Moonvember. It's officially December 1st. Let's go. Yes. So let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. We got Bitcoin pump we just tapped 19 month highs at roughly 38,800. We're currently still up over 2% on the day, trading above 38.4. We also have Ether trading above 2,000 and the rest of the major cryptos pumping. And in the green, they say when in doubt, zoom out. So let's look on the monthly. Bitcoin now up almost 11%. And Bitcoin is now up probably close to 140% from the beginning of the year. We have Ether up almost 15%, Solana up 56%, Cardano up 30% and even XRP and BNB are in the green for the month. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, we're sitting at 1.44 trillion as far as the market cap with 47 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. We got the Bitcoin dominance at 52.1% and the Ether dominance also on the climb at 17.3%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours, Terra Classic leading the pack up 17% on the day and almost 84% percent on the week, trading at uh, 0.00013. Then we have Celestia up almost 10%, trading just under seven bucks, followed by Arweave up 9%, trading at $8.44. Now, which altcoins are you currently most bullish on for this bull run? Please do let me know in that live chat. Don't forget, this is a live and interactive show. So also let me know where you're tuning in from and checking out crypto bubbles, massive gains throughout the entire crypto market. As you can see here, virtually everything is in the green. Zooming out on the weekly, even bigger gains. Some are in the red. We had some uh, alt dump majorly, including X and E hex and checking out the monthly virtually everything is just rocking and rolling. Some of these cryptos are up 100 or 200 plus percent, including Celestia, Tau, and even FTT, the scam token of the FTX exchange and checking out the crypto greed and fear index. We're currently rated a 71 in greed yesterday a 74 last week, a 66 and last month, a 66 in greed. So there you have it. My crypto fam, let me know how many of you are 
bullish for this December? And where do you think the price action is likely to take us? Holla at your boy. But anyways, we have a lot to cover. So let's dive into our Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out the charts where the Bitcoin price action is likely to go next. We know 40,000 is coming. But when? Let's discuss it, shall we? And welcome everyone just joining us. Bitcoin returned to 38,000 December 1st after the November monthly close became its best since April of 2022. And here you're looking at the Bitcoin one hour chart, which looks pretty lit. Data from Cointelegraph and TradingView tracked impressive overnight Bitcoin price performance, which held the key support. The close came in at just over 37.7 with the bid liquidity preserving the intraday range, avoiding a last minute sell off per order book data from trading resource material indicators. As you can see here, the monthly close looks pretty good. Closing above 35,000, said SKU, could see some multi-week compression between 35 and $39,000 as the outline here. SKU added that the major resistance on the monthly timeframes now lay higher at 47,000 and around the 2021 all-time high of 69 G's, baby. Quitting him here, the monthly candle was excellent with a candle body low of 34.5. This is important in the lower candle body low, which it was higher than the preceding candle body high. This is a sign of strength. And lest we forget to close 3,000 high, 3, higher this month than last month, that's progress. Now quoting the wolf of all streets, uh, Scott Melker, Bitcoin is breaking out on the lower time frame. The trip above the 38,000 mark, which came hours after the close, marked Bitcoin's first noticeable move in the latter half of the week. U.S. macroeconomic data prints conversely failed to attract much of a response. We have the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell due to speak on the day and what could be the last chance for the external volatility to be triggered. Now, highlighting the stubborn nature of the current range below 40,000, Material Indicators co-founder Keith Allen argued that clearing it would be high significantly. Now, Allen referenced the historical resistance support lines in play within the range. These of similar importance to those already cleared, such as the previous cycles 2017, all-time high of near 20,000. Now, how many of you were in Bitcoin in 2017? Let me know. Quitting him here. If you think Bitcoin is hovering around an arbitrary price, you would be mistaken. There is a significant amount of historical confluence in this little resistance support flip zone. And as you can see in the chart, it shows levels to note on the monthly chart, along with the long and short signals from one of the material indicators proprietary trading indicators. So the signals are bullish. So let's go. And as shared here, Bitcoin just hit the highest price in 574 days. Kind of feels like a lifetime, doesn't it? But we back fam. So let's celebrate again. Massive congrats to all my Bitcoin hodlers out there and quitting Max Kaiser. Millions are fleeing the repressive regimes at the United States, Canada, the EU, etc. and migrating to El Salvador, the new land of the free preach. Shout out to everyone out there, Najib Bokele and everyone making big moves. So there you have it, my crypto fam. How many of you are bullish for this December? And what do you feel we're likely to end the month of December? But without further ado, let's dive into our next story of the day and discuss the Bitcoin ETFs, which are on everyone's mind right now. The eToro CEO shared some insights regarding it. So let's break this down. While the grassroots crypto adoption went stale after last year's implosions of the industry, trading platform eToro's chief executive executive believes that the appeal of the ETFs for institutions and ease of investing through various platforms for non-professionals can further drive Bitcoin adoption. Let's go. eToro CEO Yoni Asia or Asia. Uh, he shared at the recent Abu Dhabi Finance Week that the institutions typically have rigid systems and prefer not to build the new infrastructure for each asset class. However, for him, products like Bitcoin ETFs align with their existing modes of operation, making it easier for them to enter the market without developing new frameworks. He explained the following, Bitcoin ETFs can be a significant driver of adoption because institutions work in a very rigid way. They are looking for the same infrastructure. An ETF, in many cases, is that infrastructure to enable institutional demand to those who don't want to self-custody. He makes a good point. Now, he also added that the availability of the Bitcoin ETF would likely bolster Bitcoin's legitimacy in the eyes of institutional investors and in turn support the asset's price as it represents a familiar and institutionalized form of investment. And here's the dude right here, the head of E. 
eToro, and it is eToro, I believe, that joint ventured with X and Elon. So when you type in Bitcoin and you see those charts and you have the opportunity to buy Bitcoin right on X, that's thanks to eToro, just FYI. Bitcoin surpassed 35 Gs in October, a price not seen since May of 2021, partly due to the excitement around the spot, Bitcoin ETF approvals, such as from the largest asset managers, BlackRock, Fidelity, etc. The leading crypto by market cap has since hovered between 37 and now $39,000. And meanwhile, according to the CEO, the ease of investing in Bitcoin through user-friendly platforms and its integrations into diverse investment portfolios are crucial to the onboarding of more retail users into the market. Quoting him here, on the retail level, it's all about the user experience, simplicity, and the ability to embed crypto investments and crypto trading into a wider portfolio. This is what we believe crypto should be, an investment that is a part of a more holistic investment view of investing in the stock markets, yield products, and commodities. Now, a September report from the blockchain research firm Chainalysis shows that despite a decrease in worldwide grassroots crypto adoption, the lower middle income countries such as India, Nigeria, and Ukraine saw the most recovery in grassroots crypto adoption over the last year. While I know we had obviously a war in the Ukraine and there is massive poverty in Nigeria and hyperinflation of their currency, so it's not surprising. And according to the study, the numbers are extremely promising for crypto prospects paired with the increasing institutional adoption driven by organizations in high income countries. Quoting him again, I think generally Bitcoin's adoption is about people understanding the need for unconfiscatable censorship resistant internet money. And that only grows over time. And I think a lot of you guys don't recognize the true value of unconfiscatable, perfect money, censorship resistant. That is priceless, especially to billionaires and influencers around the world who don't want to get their funds confiscated, such as the Tates and many others, fam. The executives believe that the more people will understand why they need to accumulate crypto, the same way some investors deal in gold and other commodities. Quitting him again, crypto is still an emerging internet commodity and will continue to see increased interest over time in Bitcoin for the next decade. I have no doubt that in 10 years, it is going to have higher prices and be a more significant significant force for the world. So there you have it, my crypto fam. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the sentiment from the eToro CEO regarding these Bitcoin ETFs. But without further ado, let's dive into our next story of the day because we have a lot to cover. Uh, we discussed Bitcoin ETFs, but now let's discuss specifically the dates and when we're likely to get the approval. Because according to the Bloomberg analysts, all of the ETF apps will get approved in January. And currently there's 13 of them sitting on the desk of the SEC. So here we go. Bloomberg analyst says the USS SEC is gearing up to approve all bids for a spot market Bitcoin ETF. In a lengthy thread on X, James Safart says the SEC is making an earlier than expected ruling on Franklin Templeton's bid for a Bitcoin ETF means the regulatory agency could be setting the stage to approve the others in January. Let's go. Quitting the analysts here. Wow. The SEC went super early on Franklin. They weren't due for another decision until January 1st. Now, notably, Franklin is the only issuer who didn't submit an updated Form S1 registration of asset-backed security yet. Wonder if that has any impact here. Going super early on Franklin today and potentially the hash decks coming too would set things up for a full wave of approvals in early January. So what are your thoughts on that? However, the SEC didn't end up ruling early on Hashdex's bid. Instead, the regulatory body pushed it back to a specific date, prompting Safart to believe the SEC is aiming to approve all the Bitcoin ETF apps at that same time. And you can see them all right here. We got Grayscale, ARC21, iShares Bitcoin Trust, which is BlackRock. We got Bitwise Bitcoin ETP, VanX. We got Wisdom Tree, Invesco, Wise Origin, Valkyrie, Global X, Hashtex, and Franklin Templeton. You can see the second deadline, January 1st of 2024. So could this be a sign of the times that they're all going to be approved? Let me know your thoughts. And quoting him again, this delay on Hashtex all but confirms for me that this was likely a move to line every applicant up for a potential approval by January 10th of 2024, which is the next major deadline. And if we miss that deadline, they're going to push it back again to the next deadline, which would be in March. But they say 90% probability we get this approved by January. However, 
You never know what's going to happen, especially with no Claire Gare, just saying. However, Safeheart says the process may not go smoothly as there could be some hangups with the filing process or the SEC may end up denying the bids. 100%, anything can happen. Gonna sprinkle some caveats here. Number one, this is just the 19B4, which is a new derivative security product filing for approvals. We know from updates and other sources that the SEC still isn't quite ready to approve the S1 prospectuses just yet. So approval could happen here without immediate launch. And number two, they could still be denied. So I'd love to know your thoughts, fam. How do you think this will likely play out? Let me know. And breaking news just in, Grayscale is preparing for its Bitcoin ETF launch with the hiring of Invesco ETF executive as the managing director to head the distribution and strategic partnerships. We are all set for rocket ship to the moon. Send it and let's freaking go. Anyways, I'm going to read our next story. I'm sure we'll pump the 39 and eventually 40 as the stream continues, but I still got a lot to cover. We broke down the latest with the ETFs. The next big news is adoption in Colombia. How many of you would love to see Bitcoin become a legal tender in Colombia? Do let me know because Samson Mao is making big moves. Here's the president right here. And guess who was just with the president? Samson Mao. Check it out. He actually sent the president 100,000 sats to be exact and orange pilled him. So massive respect and shout out to Samson Mao. And as he shares here, thank you, President, for the welcoming message. We're excited to help Colombia to move forward. Don't lose your Bitcoin. So there you have it. And he had very positive words to say. And they're talking about adopting Bitcoin. And there's other countries in South America looking to do the same. And all thanks to Samson Mao, he's like an ambassador to help these leaders of the world, including people in Mexico, politicians from all around the world. So he's making big moves. And this is pretty lit. I lived in Colombia. I spent six months months in Medellin. It's a beautiful place to be. There's a population of roughly 50 million people. So this could be the next evolutionary step for mass world adoption. Let's go. Colombian President Gustavo Petro reportedly became a hodler of Bitcoin. This development comes on the heels of a meeting between the president and delegation led by Samson Mao, founder of Jan3, a company at the forefront of the Bitcoin nation state adoption. The meeting, as reported by local media, that's right, and through social channels, represents a significant step in exploring the integration of Bitcoin and blockchain tech in Colombia's socioeconomic fabric. Jan3 statement on X hinted at potential policy shifts, quoting him here, is Bitcoin usage in Colombia likely to usher in new po policies? Definitely, maybe. The Jan3 team met with the president to discuss its potential implementation in social projects. Now, further adding to the intrigue, Samson Mao posted an image with the president revealing the president of Colombia is now a Bitcoin hodler for sure, 100,000 sats to be exact. That's what's up. Mao expressed gratitude towards the president for his openness, stating, thank you, president, for the welcoming message. We're excited to help Colombia to move forward and don't lose your Bitcoin. Sage advice. There you have it. That's pretty epic to say the least. And additionally, we have the CEO of IOV Labs acknowledging the meeting's significance, aligning with the goal to foster a more prosperous society, he said. Thank you, president, for receiving us. We share the commitment to create a more prosperous society. So there you have it. Now let's discuss this adoption a little deeper. Local media outlet Di Diario and W Radio reported that the president is exploring the use of Bitcoin in the national economy through cooperatives. The president is also considering the application of blockchain tech in various public sectors, such as the health billing, management of special asset society, and large restitution processes. The president emphasized the potential for managing the health billing system and property management in real time using blockchain tech, as well as the integration of Bitcoin and worker cooperatives within the popular economy. The meeting at the Casa de Nariño included discussions on these key issues, underscoring the growth interest and potential government support for Bitcoin and blockchain tech in Colombia. Participants included renowned blockchain tech experts, Samson Mao, Diego, Raul, Edwin Rivas, Christian Quintero, and Mauricio Tovar. However, it's important to note that cryptos are not yet regulated 
in Colombia. The financial superintendency has been conducting a pilot plan for the use of crypto for a few years, but the results are still pending. The implementation of the strategies proposed by the president remain uncertain until further developments in crypto regulation are made in Colombia. And the president's engagement with Bitcoin and block tech experts signals a possible pivot towards embracing these technologies at the national level. As Colombia grapples with the regulatory aspects, the president's involvement could be a harbinger of more definitive Bitcoin and crypto policies and broader adoption in the near future. Now, remarkably, Mao has just a few days ago in Suriname, where he met the president, Sean Santoki, in which I shared in great detail in yesterday's episode, another country likely to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender. Their population is roughly over 600,000, and they are just north of Brazil. And other government officials to develop a a potential Bitcoin strategy to transform the small South American country's economic model. Amongst other things, Mao also hinted at the central bank investing 1% of its reserves into Bitcoin. So is this a coincidence? We're pumping, hitting new 19-month highs off of the back of all of this institutional adoption. We have nation-state adoption, major countries contemplating making Bitcoin a legal tender. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, fam, in the comments right down below. Yeah. But anyways, fam, let's, now that we tap 39, I feel pretty damn good. That's a pretty big accomplishment. So kudos, congratulations, all the Bitcoin hodlers out there. Let's freaking go. Now let's break down our next story of the day, discuss this $524,000 target and the latest from on-chain analyst, Willie Wu. Uh, shout out Willie Wu. And again, shout out to Samson Mao making big moves. Let's get it. Here we go. Popular on-chain analyst Willie Wu says one indicator that marked Bitcoin's 2022 bottom is suddenly flashing bullish again. Wu tells his 1 million followers that Bitcoin is flowing off the exchanges similar to how it did when the crypto market reached the bottom last year. Quitting him here, Bitcoin flows presently making a strong flip to moving off the exchanges again. I haven't seen such a swing towards buying since the market bottom. Now, fellow on-chain analyst Plan B is also bullish on Bitcoin. He says Bitcoin's hash rate, which measures the processing power of the King Crypto's network, suggests the top digital asset will remain above one key level, quoting him here, breaking Bitcoin valuation based on difficulty, which is the hash rate, increased to 35,000 yesterday. Uh, in my opinion, this could mean that apart from the possible black swans or short-term volatility, based on the dollar kilowatt arbitrage fundamentals, Bitcoin will never go below 35,000 ever again. Do you hear that, perma bears? And all you guys shorting Bitcoin, pay attention. Plan B recently said he believes Bitcoin can hit $524,000 per coin within the next four years based on historical trend during the four-year halving cycles. He says Bitcoin seems to perform 4x the lower range of the cycles. Quoting him here, at 2012 halving, most Bitcoin was less than 16 bucks. At the 2016 halving, most Bitcoin was in the 256 to $1,024 range. At the 2020 halving, most Bitcoin was in the four to $16,000 range. And by the time of the 2024 halving, most Bitcoin will be in the 16 to $65,000 range. I would not be surprised if the next four years, most Bitcoin will transfer in the $65,000 to $524,000 range. And the stock, the flow is ultimately saying, expect the Bitcoin price past the halving, which means post-halving 2024 in the range between $100,000 and a $1 million per coin. Now, granted, that's a pretty wide gap, but nonetheless, it's bullish as all hell, so you gotta love it. So 524,000, half a million dollar Bitcoin price. What are your thoughts, crypto fam? Let me know in the comments right down below. And do you agree? We'll never see a sub $35,000 ever again. Let's now break into our featured story of the day, Jack Maulers, the Strike CEO, says the Bitcoin price action is likely to tackle multiple six figures at neck breaking speed and it'll eventually hit a million dollars per coin. So let's break this down for you. Welcome to everyone just joining us. Massive shout out to everyone out there. So he was recently interviewed on Fox and this is where he shared Bitcoin is going to hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin. I agree with him. And here's a little more insights to what he shared in this specific interview. The CEO of Lightning Network Wallet Strike says one catalyst can trigger a surge for Bitcoin, which would swiftly see it hit six-figure price tag. And how many of you uh, agree with Jack Maulers? In the interview, he says that he envisions Bitcoin eventually being worth hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin as the U.S. government continues to mount more debt. 
quoting him here, oh my gosh, this thing is going to hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin. The US government is in so much debt. The way I think about Bitcoin's price, it equals technology plus fiat liquidity. So it is going to go up because it's innovative tech and is better money, preach. But what really shoots it up at neck breaking pace is when our government is tens of trillions of dollars in debt and has to roll that debt over. So you get a lot of money to print and financial assets are going to soar. Bitcoin goes up most because it's the hardest to make more of. Facts, every other asset out there, they can make more of. They can find more gold. Uh, they can print more money. You name it. Bitcoin's the only one with the finite limited supply, making it perfect money. So according to Maulers, the government will continue to print money to prop up the economy rather than opt for the hard reset, a move that will cause the assets such as stocks and crypto and gold to soar. Quoting him again, the government has a third option, which is unique to them. They can print the money that they are missing. And when they print the money that they are missing, they are stealing from all the people that hold U.S. dollars. The only way to save yourself is to not own dollars. And that's when you see things like the S&P and gold and Bitcoin soar. That's what is going to happen over the next two years. And to watch this interview he did on Fox, check the show notes below the video in the description. I also transcribed another interview he did. I think it was also on Fox. And he shared some very powerful insights I want to share with you. If silver is going to a thousand X, I will walk into my kitchen right now. I will melt all my silverware and I will sell it at market. If gold is going to rally, Elon Musk will find more on Mars. This is a super important point. Bitcoin is the only monetary instrument in the history of our species that is fixed. It does not matter how much more demand comes into the asset class. No one will ever be able to make more of it. There are two things I can guarantee you in my life. Number one, that I'll die. And number two, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. Preach. And those are the two things that I can only value. It's my life and my Bitcoin. So it is the only fixed supply asset. It is not that complicated. It's going to go up because everything else can be issued more. He makes a brilliant point here. The only thing that is clear to us and clear to our customers is that you cannot hold and save in dollars anymore. Tell them. I think there is going to be a new era of the U.S. dollar where inflation will enter and normalize 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10%. The days of 2% inflation are over. The Fed really blew this thing up. You can call it inflation because the CPI is a load of nonsense, right? Amen. Like the government is going to tell me how the dollar is inflating based on a basket of instruments. Like my Netflix subscription or my Caesar salad doesn't actually tell me how the dollar is doing or how much it is being devalued. Miami real estate does. Bitcoin does. Bitcoin is up over 50% this year, now up roughly 140%, just FYI. So you're telling me the dollar isn't inflating? You're out of your mind. I'm not listening to that. The Fed and the whole monetary system is based on trust, and they constantly, they constantly break that trust. It would be the equivalent to there's a fire outside my house. I smell the smoke, and someone tells me, nah, 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 it's a bunch of teenagers putting on a bonfire. Okay, but I hear one police siren. Are you sure it's a bonfire? Oh, yeah, 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 it's a bonfire. Now I hear 10 sirens, 100 sirens. Now my whole community is running out. I'm not going to get up and look outside the window to see what's going on. I don't believe them for a second. You have to be absolutely crazy to believe the Federal Reserve right now. They're full of it, and I don't have to because I own Bitcoin. Word. There is no one that can deflate my instrument. I get to hold it, save in it. I know the monetary policy. I sleep like a baby, like the baby face that I am. I think you're crazy to believe the Fed and these swap lines and treating these assets at par. It is a gimmick. It is a scam. Very powerful words coming from Jack Mullers. I shared this back in August. It got a lot of love, so I wanted to share it with you today. We already got 371 retweets, 1.8 thousand likes. So if you like that, let me know uh, your feedback. Also, he shared Western Union can't allow me to pay for my coffee. Visa won't allow me to remit money. Lightning does both and better and open and global. And so you guys come out and play on my court. And let's see who can develop the best experience for the customer. Because I bet all of my life I can build a better experience on the Lightning Network than Jamie Dimon, aka Jamie the Tapeworm Diamond, CEO of JP Morgan Chase. Preach and massive shout out to Jack Maulers. Now to his $1 million price prediction he shared in a different interview. I want 
to highlight some of the highlights from this speech uh, that he gave because it's also very powerful. Uh, here's what he says. I shared with you there are only two things that he can guarantee in his life. One, that he won't live forever and nobody can create more than 21 million Bitcoins, which is the truth. He also shares that my overall opinion is the name of the game is to accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible regarding the altcoins. He says they're interesting, but a lot more speculative. I use them to accumulate more Bitcoin. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that sentiment. He also pointed out uh, Bitcoin being uh, hitting a million dollars, and he says it will hit a million dollars fueled by global hyperinflation. And I feel we're experiencing that just right now with the US dollar. They always claim 2% inflation, it's under control. It's a load of nonsense. They make up the numbers, they fudge the numbers, they pull them out of thin air so that you could perceive whatever reality they want you to perceive. That's the nature of the beast. Trust nobody, verify everything. Stack sats, we're at 38,900 right now. Bitcoin's pumping, we up 1,200 bones on the day. Let's go.